um, thanksgiving can be um, what I might um, um, describe as an evangelism bridge. I think we're more effective in our sharing of our faith if we are to speak of the many things that blessings that God is doing for us rather than start with your sinner. Um, uh, I think if we start with what God is doing for us, what we're thankful for, people will say, yes, that's the kind of thing that I would like to hear more of. That's the kind of thing I would like to um, experience. In our thanksgiving, we are testifying to all the mighty things that God has done. The Psalms, um, as I was saying last week, there, in the book of Psalms, there are many different types of Psalms, but they can be grouped together. And perhaps um, just over 10% of them might de be described as Psalms of Thanksgiving. But many of these Psalms who are described as Psalms of Praise or Psalms of Lament actually have verses of thanksgiving within them. So if you were to say, uh, what are the um, Psalms of thanksgiving, you might, um, might number 15 to 20 of them. But if you were to say, what Psalms speak of thanksgiving, well, there would be um, much more. Um, of those psalms. Um, uh, I, I learned most of my Bible verses when I was young. But one of the things I kind of like is the fact when you can learn a Bible verse that comes in multiple places because I think that counts as learning multiple verses. And so uh, one of those verses that I love is um, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. That counts for Psalm 106, 107, twice in Psalm 118, and multiple times in Psalm 136. So you learn one verse, you get to use it multiple times. So it's, um, it's a good one. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Our worship needs to include personal testimony, not just speaking about God abstractly, God's character, God's attributes, not just words of praise, but speaking specifically about what God is doing in our lives with words of thanksgiving. Miracles are extraordinary blessings that draw our attention to God. But I think... Often when our lives are going well, we often overlook God's ordinary blessings. I mean, when something miraculous happens, that gets our attention and often leads us to thanksgiving. But in our daily lives, there are so many blessings that come that after a while, we start to take them for granted. And we don't see them as um, things of thanks, and therefore we don't tend to see them as blessings, and therefore I think we undermine our understanding of what God is doing in our life. When I got baptized as a teenager, uh, my parents gave me a book, and in the cover of the book, they um, wrote um, something, but included a reference to some verses in First Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, and I just want to focus on one of those um, here, and that's be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. As a teenager, you're facing the world, you're wondering many things. Um, what should I study? Where should I study? What should I do? What do I want to be? Um, <laughs> Will I ever find anybody who's willing to marry me? Uh, you know, you're worrying, wondering all those kind of things. And I, I might say I wasn't the only one worrying about that. Uh, my parents were worried about that too. <laughs> what? Ew, we'll be stuck with them forever. Um, and, um, but learning um, to, uh, if we really want to know what God's will for us is, it's kind of simple. Be thankful in all circumstances. Now, I think it's important there to remember that it's be thankful in all circumstances, not be thankful 
far off circumstances because there is much evil and suffering in the world and we're not being asked to be thankful for that. But in our circumstances, as we find the blessings of God and we find his presence with us, we can be thankful in all circumstances. And I think it's a, it's, this is crucial for us individually and as a church is to continually uh, remember and recognize that even beyond extraordinary miracles, there are daily blessings for which we can be thankful. Um, arguably, and I say arguably because you may not have, you may not actually remember my sermon where I made that point, but arguably, God's language of love is gift giving. And if you don't remember the sermon, that's okay. It's online. You can go back and re, uh, rewatch it. Uh, but um, James says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created the lights in the heavens. Um, the psalm says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. In giving to us, God expresses his love for us. And I want to suggest that every time we give thanks, it's like opening the present that God is giving us and finding the love that is inside. Every day, God is giving you blessings, ordinary blessings, not spectacular, but ordinary, everyday blessings. He is giving them to you. And many of us are sticking the boxes unopened in a room at the back of the house that is overflowing. And it's now so difficult to get into that room because we keep tossing boxes unopened, presents unopened. Who leaves a present unopened? Hopefully, yeah, nobody's willing to admit to it. But why would, you know, it's such a pretty box. I love it. Nice ribbon. I love it. Put away. No. You open the box and find the love that is inside. And every blessing that God gives us is an opportunity to discover the love of God that is inside. Last week as we were talking about lament, I was trying to suggest that as we lament, as we allow ourselves to engage God in lament, uh, it ha allows us to hold on to God in the midst of a storm. It's like a, a thin thread by which we hold to God as we lament before him in the midst of a storm. But I want to suggest that in um, this morning, in the good times, we need to connect to God. We still need to hang on to God. And I think that for many of us, I, I think this is true, that for many of us, when we get into the storm, our attention is turned to God, and we are focused on Him, it, whether it's prayers or lament or prayers or petition or prayers, or, but God is our focus. But it's when the storm stops and the sun comes out and things seem to be going okay that we can find ourselves taking our eyes off Jesus. We can take our focus away from God. And I want to suggest this morning that in the good times, is as we celebrate those good times by giving thanks, as we open the presence of blessings that God gives to us and find the love that is inside, that we hold on to God even in the good times. In the good times. In the good times, as we express thanksgiving, we will increase our faith. I mean, it's like, I mean, at least the image in my head is of a, of a strand that, hold, that we hold connecting us to God. But every time we give thanks, it's like you add another strand to that rope. And it gets bigger and bigger, and we, the, the, our holding to God becomes more secure as we give thanks. And allow God's love to be more present and visible in our lives. I also think that by expressing thanksgiving in the good times, it will keep us humble. 
Uh, it is so easy for people to think that they are self-made. Um, I've known a lot of people who, are, um, who think that they're self-made, and they are, they've only achieved what they've achieved because of the work of people around them. But in their ingratitude, they think it's themselves. But as we give thanks for the blessings that God puts into our lives, I think that will keep us humble. It will keep us aware that we are not self-made people. And it will make us more like God. If we're giving thanks to God for his goodness to us, I think it will make us gracious to other people. What, is a godly, what does a godly person look like? A godly person looks like God one who is generous. And the more that we give thanks to God, the more I think we will experience that. Um, Over the last um, year, in different ways, uh, we've talked about the circularity of grace. Charis is the Greek word for grace. In charis, um, the first century concept of um, grace uh, is a benevolence. God, in his goodness, gives generously. And in the first century thinking and in biblical thinking, that generosity of God needs to be matched by our thankfulness. It is a failure in so many ways um, if we don't um, respond to God's grace with um, gratitude. Um, David De Silva, who's a New Testament scholar um, and explores the um, cultural Um, context of words like grace and um, how that is understood, has written a commentary on Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews. And he he says that the the problem in Hebrews, the reason why there are those um, addressed by this um, letter who are drifting from God is because they are responding to his grace with ingratitude. Ingratitude kills faith. Ingratitude resists grace. Um, Think of the uh, Israelites wandering in the desert. Why are they wandering in the desert? Because when God gave them blessings, they gave him ingratitude. And so they were unable to experience all the blessings that God had intended for them. Part of their um, uh, ingratitude was manna. I mean, do you remember that story? I mean, every day there would be manna um, uh, around them, and they had to go out and collect it, and they would be able to eat it in in the wilderness desert. And can you imagine that? You know, like um, every morning you go out, you pick up... um, uh, maybe if you're a farmer, you already do that. But, I mean, uh, for us suburban boys, going out, picking up um, the manna, you'd think that was pretty wonderful. They got sick of it. Like, well, every day it's the same thing. Oh, no. And their ingratitude led them to lose that connection with God, and they wandered in the wilderness. Ingratitude... Um, Um, is a faith killer. The proper response to that is gratitude, which will build our faith. But I think also indifference to God's blessings in our life is also the same kind of thing. Indifference and gratitude, one might be passive, one might be um, active, but they're the same thing, where we don't recognize God's blessings in our life. As I've suggested, um, the Psalms, as we read through um, the Psalms and we see what the psalmist is thankful for, we see the psalmist expressing um, their thanks for salvation, for personal things, and for corporate things. Now, obviously, um, the psalmist didn't speak about the crucified Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but the psalmist talked about um, being rescued out of Egypt and going through the Dead Sea and God restoring his people after um, they had gone into exile. It's, um, they speak about the mighty works of God. And for us, um, a constant focus should be on the mighty works that God has done in our salvation. But it also needs the eye. I am thankful because of what you're doing. 
I suggested um, last year um, when we were talking about Thanksgiving that it would be a useful thing if every evening um, before you um, went to sleep that you thought of three things that you could be thankful for. The um, scientific research suggests that if you give thanks for three things for 30 days in a row, that your brain will be rewired and you will become a more thankful and optimistic person. Some of us may need that more than others, but 30 days of giving thanks. How easy is it for us as Christians? Because we know who we need to give thanks to. And we can re, uh, rewire our brains to be thankful and optimistic um, persons. But of course, there's also the corporate worship, uh, um, the corporate giving thanks. And in a uh, few weeks, I'll be speaking about some of the prayers of Paul for the church in which he gives thanks for um, God's people. But there are many things that we can be thankful for. Um, we've already mentioned this morning the cold blue, cold red stuff. Um, but it's not just that, it's the respect that is given to the church because of the work it's doing. It's the people who are involved, the volunteers who are involved in that, the building that we have that enables us to do that, the grants that we've um, collected over the years that have um, allowed us to have showers and um, washing machines and stuff like that. There is much for us to be thankful for. And in terms of... Um, um, uh, um, uh, things that we can be thankful for the church. I've got written down here um, Lily Hope Abraham, who has actually um, turned up this morning. And so um, we have much to be thankful for. Um, and it's exciting to be in a church um, that is um, um, got the excitement of young people being born and young people getting engaged and um, all the things that go with it. We are in a family church, and there's so much to be thankful um, for that. And so um, um, let me point out that Lily Hope um, Abraham, what, this is, might be his, her second week in the world, and she's at church. So she's, she's running on 50% attendance. Um, so you start, um, start thinking about how you're doing with your... Um, I think. And, um, and then also the wonders of God in creation. I was down here on Tuesday, and um, um, Colin was just um, well, at home doing nothing, I guess. Um, and, so, and so I wandered down to the um, beach and took a picture of the blue sky and the blue sea and the golden beach and sent it to her. Um, so that she would experience at least some sense of jealousy of not being down here uh, with me. It was just beautiful. And there is so much beauty in the world, and I think um, that gives us cause to give thanks to God and to enjoy that. And as we give thanks for that, instead of just being a beautiful scene, it becomes something that hold, uh, holds us closer um, to God. Those who believe in the goodness of God give thanks. Not just for the big things, but for all the things that are happening to us. Those who believe in the goodness of God give thanks. Those who believe in the compassion of God give thanks. Those who believe in the faithfulness of God give thanks. Giving thanks keeps those of us who believe in God connected to God. And so I just want to conclude in terms of um, um, refocusing us on um, something of what the Psalms teach us about the th um, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is relational. It completes the circle of grace. God gives, and we respond to that. And so in our thanksgiving, we are connected to God. Thanksgiving is an act of testimony to ourselves, that God is good and that God loves us. Um, but it is also a testimony to the church and to the people that we meet um, in our various walks of life. 
Thanksgiving enhances our joy. Uh, it's great to get a present, but it's the love that's inside that brings the real joy. It builds our faith. It gives us hope. It keeps us humble. And it makes us generous. We have much to be thankful for. Let's pray. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider, there is nothing that we have. There is no good blessing that we have that does not come from your hand. And so we give you thanks this morning, not just because you are a great God, but because you are a great God who expresses your love for us in practical ways. We thank you that this day we will have much to be thankful for and we pray that we would be prepared to name those and to remind ourselves time and time again that our God is a gracious God who gives to us all that we need. Amen. Let's stand for the benediction. But as we do, let's remember that Evie is um, located herself in front of the coffee area so that she will be able to take your money um, for the um, brownies that are made. That's part of our school project, and the money goes to a good cause. So if um, you see um, Evie over there, um, you'll know that she's selling brownies. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in God's shalom to love and serve the Lord through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.